Welcome back. Still tuned into the market. Let's connect with Sanjeev Bhaseen as well, who's joining us on the show. And Sanjeev, just uh, going by the kind of news flow that we're getting with respect to um, these uh, explosions, uh, reports of explosions in Iran, while no uh, concrete uh, confirmations have come about to the extent of this, how do you, uh, you know, read into this news flow into how investors should really be approaching the markets? Yeah, good morning. So, Avan, generally, uh, we have had an excellent bull market run and there was a much needed correction. This uh, has actually added fuel to the fire. And uh, I think, you know, historically or since my experience, whenever the first bullets are fired, generally markets uh, bottom out. So, I think uh, the, it, may, it may have been more rhetoric and more of market experiencing some correction paranoia. But I would say that we should be marking the bottom of this by maybe Monday or Tuesday. Whatever has to happen will happen over the weekend. And if there was no follow through, it was all more of rhetoric. Uh, uh, then I think, uh, I think uh, you know, better sense will prevail rather than this getting out of hand. And it will mark the end of this uh, much needed correction, which will weed out the men from the boys. Generally, such opportunities come in uh, once in many, many months. And those are the time where you should actually be deploying some cash to good use. Okay, so tell us um, how you would be looking to deploy that. So like I said, I mean, uh, select stocks are giving you very good entry points, which have been outperformers, largely the PSUs, defense stocks, uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, ONGCs of the world, OJ, ONGC, Vedanta, India Bull Real Estate. These continue to be my top picks. Uh, today, I would look to buy IDFC First Bank. I think that is looking very, very good in the mid-cap banks. With uh, with essence here now that mid-cap banks' earnings will be far ahead of the estimates. Uh, you could look at uh, Hindustan Lever, which again, I think is very good proxy to uh, rising rural incomes and, expend and expenses over there. And, and and lastly, but not last but not least, I think some of the large cap banks, Axis, ICIC are giving you a very good entry point. And if the fear today could be near to the bottoming out of the near terms correction, then you would uh, find yourself in a sweet spot once this, uh, uh, you know, uh, geopolitical risk subsides by, by hopefully next week. That geopolitical risk subsides or not for now, Mr. Basin. But um, what's your view on emphasis? And I was just doing that comparative between emphasis and TCS, and we should pull up those graphics as well. How TCS has actually managed to outperform with a 1.1% constant currency growth this quarter versus a 2.2% decline coming in from emphasis. Margin situation is also very stark. While TCS reported a 100 basis point improvement, emphasis reported a decline of 40 basis point. And of course, the difference in stock price is also quite visible with a very weak guide coming in from Infosys now. Uh, what should one do with the IT pack and specifically Infosys? Should one throw the towel and just move on to TCS and better names? Yeah, good morning, Anisha. I think the market had a had a premonition that Infosys numbers are going to be like that. I mean, from 1650, the stock was closer to 1400. And I thought that, uh, you know, even I was surprised at the steady downturn now, comparative to an, an, a TCS, we've always had this comparison where Infosys has given those, uh, you know, one-offs in some certain quarters. But like I said, I think the growth parameter on all accounts is missing. I would rather be more optimistic on, uh, of course, TCS, but Wipro, which has been a star outperformer, given that they have changed their, uh, you know, business model, they've done some inorganic buy, buy, buyouts which has aided the bottom line on the top line both. And I think Wipro could be the star for uh, large caps over here. I also like LTIM on the, uh, in the mid cap space after the recent correction. I think LTIM numbers, which are due on 24th, will be far excess of what the street is making out. A change in uh, the management or the you know top rung is not good enough reason for the stock to correct more than 20%. I think LTIM and uh, Wipro would be two of my preferred pick along with HCL Tech and uh, TCS. Enough. Uh, UBS's view, at least when it comes to Infi, is that there is limited downside from here on because the market was already positioned for a disappointment, but one will have to just wait and watch. What about Bajaj Auto, given the kind of performance that it delivered? Do you think that this merits uh, some sort of a, uh, you know, a leg up? 
Well, uh, Avan Bajaj Auto has been the star. And, you know, if you recall about two years back, there was a buyback at 3,500 when the street was making out too much of pessimism. But I think Rajiv Bajaj has been the star, you know, and I think he has delivered on all fronts and he, he has been vocal about it. The, the, the launch of the EV scooter, the conversion of, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the scooter into uh, the EV side. Uh, and and the export market is going uh, lock, stock and barrel. If you own it, just stay with it and look for any declines to buy because I think they are just at the beginning of a cycle. Plus, the margins have been very, very strong. I mean, they are almost double of what Hero or others uh, report, you know. And uh, even, even though, like I said, a large part of the positives are in the price, but I don't think this is going to correct much. And I think this will continue to be the top leader in the... Uh, or two wheel or auto pack. Uh, as a disclosure, this and Hero are two of our topics, and Maruti on the uh, four wheeler side, uh, along with M and M. So, so I think autos are still in for some more upside, and uh, we think that if you are in a good basket, then Bajaj has to be one part of that. So, Hero, Bajaj, Auto, m and Maruti, these are the top recommendations coming in from the four-wheeler basket and the two-wheeler basket. But, uh, Kunal, what's the view on the banking giants? Yesterday, it was a very weak show across the board. ICICI, Axis, they were all coming under pressure. Today, of course, Axis Bank is also going to be in focus because we understand that it's going to mull fundraise uh, via multiple securities as of April 24th. Uh, but other than that, what does the chart check suggest on these large private banking names? There's still showing signs of weakness and uh, underperformance. In fact, uh, you know, in the last four or five days of the selling for the uh, markets and the indices, the banking, the financial ones are the ones the, which have so, shown, uh, uh, you know, very uh, incremental amount of underperformance. So you have, for example, you had ICICI Bank, which is on the verge of a breakout about that 1120 plus mark. And all of a sudden, the last three days of sell off, the stock is now confirming a breakdown below its previous support of 1070. Same is the case with HDFC Bank, where the stock was at point where the stock was in line of breaking past above its 200-day moving average above the 1550 levels, and now the stock is struggling to uh, you know even break past above the 1500 mark, uh, trading below those levels. So that uh, itself indicates that large cap private sector banking names, even the more uh, better ones, relatively better ones, which had shown signs of some recovery in the last one month or so, even these stocks have been struggling to break past about their resistances with a lot of ease. And I think that's one of the bigger concerns. And that's why in this kind of a scenario, when uh, you know you see the larger cap private sector banking stocks, which have shown recovery underperforming, even the weaker ones would probably show signs of underperformance further. So I think I would probably expect the likes of Axis Bank, Indusind Bank, etc. I think they would probably also continue to drag. So I think we are now into a phase where the ba banking and the financial names could continue to drag uh, unless you see these large cap formidable names trying to get into a breakout mode. Okay, and Sanjeev, uh, next week you've got RIL coming out with the quarterly numbers. What are you bracing yourself for? So, Avan, some of parts, I think all their businesses are uh, doing excellent. The o OTC business is a cash productive. I think their ARPUs are going to come very strong as far as geo goes. Retail business is firing on all guns. So is the energy business. Uh, I, and, and I think uh, refining margins may turn out to be at the highest, you know. So all in all, I think Reliance will come out with maybe arguably the best numbers ever. But, but a large part of that is already in the price closer to 3,000. Now Reliance has been the biggest bellwether which has taken the place of HDFC Bank and which has spearheaded you. I would look more closely on the week over the weekend on HDFC numbers, HDFC Bank numbers. And if they can deliver, then I think the worst for the market may be done with. Because uh, if they are going to be two pillars, then it has to be, uh, you know, uh, Reliance and HDFC, uh, which can, uh, you know, pull, out, pull, pull us out of this uh, correction. So I would be more keen on the HDFC numbers over the weekend. They will be the key because HDFC as a HDFC bank has been a, a, a huge underperformer and uh, it has also played out on the bank nifty. I would be more keen on that, but I think Reliance will be as steady as ever. Sweltering hot here in Mumbai and I'm sure it's no different in uh, Delhi as well and it's heating up for the markets too. Uh, you had warned of this kind of weakness and volatility in the markets. Uh, what next? Do you see this weakness continue for some more time? Yeah, good morning, Aisha. Well, we've had a very sweet uh, squall in the last three days. The rainfall has come, brought the temperature down by almost 10 degrees. So no complaints. And yes, uh, we warned you, take some money off the table. There was too much of froth and that has played out well. Uh, 
you've seen commodities lead the rally gold and silver so stock specific we've been correct and we still think there is a little bit of more blood debting however in the short run we think after 22800 if you fall to 21 22 150 this there should be a lot of support here we are looking at one pullback rally because all negatives are slowly getting priced in now in this atmosphere greed and fear play out perfectly so you have to balance yourself right now it is better to be a trader and try to you know hedge your positions on the short side also but look for good entry points into stocks which we think are giving you a very very good opportunity so even at this level we are finding very very good large cap plays which we think can weather this storm and perform even better in the in the coming weeks and months so let's hear out that list everyone's waiting to hear that out where is it that you are safer in this kind of global market environment so I said lever is my top pick. Now we've been doing a sit for the last week from 20 to 50 downwards. Uh, you know, the simple reason is that rainfall is going to exceed estimates which you have uh, given on your own channel, A, B. We think uh, uh, the, the food security and the other harvest side is going to be very, very pleasantly surprising. Inflation is well contained. And fourth, in the, in the coming, upcoming election, the biggest beneficiary is the rural income. Lever is a must-have in your portfolio. It is corrected from 2700 And I think now the risk-reward is to book out of some of the heavy-performing heavy uh, FMCG and get into Lever. Lever is going to be a classic play of a defensive stroke, uh, you know, rural income play where I think the rising incomes and lower inflation and better monsoon is going to forecast. So at this price, we would say a sip in Lever I offered you just a 50 rupee downside, but a 400 rupees upside. Second, we are very, very positive on uh, stocks like LTIM, where there is negative news flow of some resignation. But I think that was already played out by insiders. LTIM, according to me, has a very good risk reward at this 4,800. We could look at upsides there. <clears throat> Third pick would be uh, India Bull Real Estate, which we have again touted that you get. You should be booking profits in the last in the heavy duty names of Godrej and DLF and getting into this stock uh, at six and a half thousand market cap, 4,000 crore infusion, and now looking to encast, uh, you know, uh, visible assets which are cell phone. There is no liability on that. I think India Bull Real Estate would be a very, very sweet spot. In, in that, you could also add on declines today and ICICI Bank, which I think will come out with the best ever results. So these four or five stocks should give you a good portfolio pick. But don't miss the woods for the trees. Lever is looking very, very attractive after this almost 18% correction. Very interesting contra call and perhaps the first on the street to bet in on Unilever. Meantime, wanted to get in your take, uh, Sanjeev on Bharti Hexacom. Jeffries is very bullish, saying it's the best play within Indian Telecom. And in the long haul, FY24 to 27, they're seeing a 16 to 21% CAGR. Your take? Yeah, one and <clears throat> Jeffries has also upgraded my old favorite HD, uh, IDFC bank. So I will go with, I think when if IDFC bank is going to 120, then Bharti Hexa can join the rally. <clears throat> I think it's a, it's a very good play on the aspirational levels which are rising as far as data and so on. But I would bet contrary. I think the give opportunity which is coming in Voda idea will be once in a lifetime. That that stock is going to change patterns. You must subscribe in that 10-11 bracket. That stock could be the stock of the year. So we are uh, preserving cash. Uh, we are very, very bullish on IDFC first. That has been my pick from 30-35. Uh, Jeffries has upgraded that target also. And I would uh, subscribe very heavily in whatever quantity and cash you have into Voda Idea. That would be my better pick than uh, the you know listed names which are already trading at premiums. Okay, in the meantime, Economic Times this morning is reporting that Apple is in talks to manufacture iPhone components and Titan is in focus because the components are expected to be for the camera modules for which they're in talks with one of the Titan subsidiaries, that's Titan Engineering and Automation, which uh, does precision component manufacturing as well as designing. Um, the Murugappa arm also is in the fray, it seems, and they may be finalizing a partner in the next five to six months. So these are the two uh, segments of stocks uh, which are in focus this morning. But Sanjeev, all excitement on Elon Musk's uh, visit to uh, New Delhi, uh, 21st, 22nd. Uh, and you know, a lot of chatter around um, 
who he's going to be meeting other than the Prime Minister. And it seems the Tata group seems to be the chosen one. At least that is what the reports seem to be indicating. Any play around the EV infrastructure you think uh, one could look at right now? Well, Aisha, it's already played out in the battery stocks. They more than doubled. I mean, Excite is at 420 and now coming with upgrade of targets. Uh, Elon Musk basically his stock is underperformed. It's down 37% year to date. So I think he's trying to make headway now into India and Tesla uh, is a much needed impetus. I don't know how successful it will be, but yes, and he's tying up with the right partners. Tata's are the right, right people to be. But it also tells you that in the longer term, India is the destination. And this PLI and uh, China One policy is telling you that uh, you are getting everything here. When last, you know, 20, 30 years back, Apple forayed into China in a big way. And now everything is coming to India. When you go, I, I was in London recently, all the brand ambassadors of the fashion side are all Indian actresses or models. When did you see that? So that's a sign of uh, India being the most touted investment globally and the demographic playing out, a premium playing out perfectly. So I think look for some of the uh, EV plays as far as the in input costs go, like batteries and all, which have already run up in anticipation of this. But uh, I think Tata's will be the best beneficiaries of that. It also highlights that now Apple is looking to expand its base. So has Bosch. And th those stocks have ex ex exceedingly well performed in the near term and in the medium term. Sanjeev, another of your recent calls, ONGC, has played out very well. And a mammoth move yesterday to, uh, you know, part of the crude spike uh, beneficiary and, of course, a brokerage upgrade is well coming in. Now what? Do you think meat of the rally has already played out in ONGC? Or can someone still look to buy afresh? Well, Aisha, thank you. Happy us to me. And you reminded one of the positives. Yes, Vedanta and ONGC have been two of my top picks which have done exceedingly well. From that 260, 270 Vedanta Zoom to 390. I will even see 490 coming. Look at where silver prices are. Look at where zinc is, copper. And they are the only producer of nickel in the country. Uh, ONGC is a churn company. I mean, you've had re-rating of all the PHUs. ONGC for me is a 400 rupee stock. Simply put, their capex is showing that their, uh, you know, return on equity and their return of debt is part and parcel of the cash accruals. Government reforms in oil and sector and uh, gas has been exceedingly positive. And I think earnings are very, very key. This stock has hardly any float as far as mutual funds and FIs go. I think there will be a B line once it crosses 300 over the previous high of 295. 390 to 400 is my target on ONGC. Use all declines to buy ONGC Vedanta that they should be outperformers. Right, and uh, Sajeev, given the fact that, you know, reports are uh, spoken about how 57% um, of India's total apparel market in within that, you've got the value fashion segment, which is one of the fastest growing latest news as well, indicating that Inditex is going to bring Bershka and Zara home to India. Just wanted to know what this spells out for the listed players. Well, very similar names. Uh... I was on a holiday and all I saw was the shopping by the ladies in those names which you said. And it's strange and uncanny. Now you have everything in India. So I think, uh, you know, the, the flavor of the day, month, year and the decade and the century is going to be India. And it tells you that, uh, you know, the brand ambassadors or the uh, uh, the ones who are doing the, uh, the part and parcel of servicing those industries are doing very well. Case in Pick, Zomato, TB Fintech. Maybe insurance and food have not done as well as the service providers. And I think that will be the case for the players who come in as far as the franchise goes. But it's evident that the rising middle income is giving an opportunity for big brands to make a foray into India. And that means all dips are buying opportunity if you have the correct selection of stock and the patience. But uh, yes, this is a very, very, uh, you know... Uh, optimistic view on India going forward that large cap brands are actually making a foray, which is why I said I told you that the best of uh, you know ladies makeup, ladies uh, all lingerie is all being flouted by top models from India rather than uh, you know some of the overseas names, which makes you more patriotic and bullish on India. <laughs> Let's uh, start off then with your assessment of all that's going on within the telecom space, be it the Vodafone idea, FPO. You've also got uh, Geo Platform mulling their listing. What does that do to the entire space? <clears throat> yeah, good morning, Avan. And 
I, like I said, I was of the view that the IPO, uh, the follow-on public offering must be subscribed to. Uh, our institutional desk has also given something, so it will be difficult for me to comment on that uh, as under compliance. But uh, like I said, I think we are in for very, very good times as far as telecom goes, as far as data usage. And the biggest positive would be the increase in ARPU on rising rates. Uh, for me to give a, a call now on, a, on the stock would be difficult as it comes under compliance. Point taken, but what about Z Entertainment? Do you track that one closely, Sanjeev? Because a lot of news flow on that one over the last couple of days, right from the rejig at the top level to the fact that they've withdrawn the merger application from NCLT, and then the stock finally is getting out of the FNO as well. Yeah, good morning, Anisha. As a disclosure, we exited both Z and Paytm in the last month. We felt that we are on a losing wicket, and you know, it was a it was a very very Difficult, uh, uh, I would say, experience because, you know, two years you led everyone up the lane, uh, creditors, debtors, uh, investors, and in the end, it turned out to be just a hoax on the merger. 3% three, 3 of holding with the going cars and they're holding the whole, such a big merger and, uh, you know, shareholders to ransom. So I think uh, the sooner you exit because there seems to be nothing on the anvil. And this is only getting murkier as the day progresses. Unfortunately, we had a view because we changed after the merger fell through. And we thought possibly which could have turned out to change the dynamics of Indian media has turned out to be a really sour spot. Sebi should look deeply into this. What was the two years that you led everyone up the lane only to disappoint? But like I said, you have winners and losers. This unfortunately is one of our losing picks. Fortunately, and if you map out the trajectory of the stock price as well, gone are the days of those levels of 350-400. Now the stock quoting at about 147. Um, Sanjeev, let's get in your thoughts then, um, given the fact that now, you know, you've got uh, the likes of Elon Musk as well, who's going to be visiting India. How, uh, you know, how are you looking at There's a lot of rumors and talks with which players he could align with. How are you looking at the overall landscape of different spaces that he could enter, what it could potentially mean for the the existing players? So, Avan, firstly, it puts India right in the front of the, uh, you know, global forefront as far as business activity goes. I mean, uh, like I said, you cannot be but present in India and, and you know, it is now, you know, highlighting what Tesla also sees as a big market space. Aside from that, the Starlink exposure could be a huge game changer on the satellite front. Now, we know Tata Com is one of the biggest players as far as the cable and the network goes. That will be one of the big ones because it comes from the house of Tatas. But I think there will be some big, big name like the Tatas which will be taking the forefront with Elon Musk on a lot of, uh, you know, things related to EVs, related to uh, um, satellite. And uh, th there's a lot of excitement. Now, which company benefits, we will only know at hindsight. But Avan, it definitely tells us that uh, maybe we are past this correction which was there for whatever reasons. And I think now at least the Nifty looks poised to regain 22,500, 22,600. So large cap stocks should be the ben biggest beneficiaries as we plow back. And I think uh, metals and commodities are leading. But I think Elon Musk's visit is not just symbolic. It is, it is a showcaser, the potential of what our economy holds for uh, investing after the China plus one will be a big, even bigger, uh, you know, icing on the cake. I'm Sanjeev, curious to get in your take then on the entire cement spec sector. Um, given that uh, we are looking at these price hikes, uh, you know, a lot of the cement prices have remained largely unchanged. Um, what is your outlook in terms of some of the companies gaining market share and how things shape up within the entire cement space? What do you like here? So, Avan, as you are aware, 53% of the market is with five players. And I continue to think that 140 million tons, the next two combined make 60 million tons. That is uh, Ultratech on 140, ACC Ambuja on the other side. Uh, actually, um, uh, Adanis have increased their stake. in. in uh, they've paid for the additional stake. They now own 70% in Ambuja. So, I am very, very positive on this space. I think cement is a no-brainer. And uh, we continue to be with the large players. Ultratech. ACC Ambuja and Dalmia Bharat. Dalmia Bharat could be a dark horse because their cost efficiency and, uh, you know, their whole network as far as uh, coal mining, coal uh, uh, input, that is very well, well played. And I think they have a very, very sweet spot 
in the regions which they surface. So I think this is a very, very good time for construction because as you are aware, as the heat plays out, the activity increases because it dries faster. And I think uh, these top three, four names should be the market leaders, outperformers. Okay, you're talking about uh, heat. Uh, that's definitely there, heat wave in India. But what about uh, Sanjeev, Vietnam? Because I understand you're there right now. Is it as hot there as well? And is it a leisure travel or a business travel? Yeah, good morning, Anisha from Hanoi. <laughs> and uh, yes, it's uh, much better weather. It is a little sultry, but it's um, there's light rain. And uh, who's complaining? So yes, it's a business come uh, pleasure travel. We have our offsite. And uh, we are, you know, uh, uh, entering new places because Vietnam's regional growth has been very, very strong. Uh, so we are on the, the 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 north side, that is Hanoi, and Ho Chi Minh is on the south side. Uh, Ho Chi Minh accounts for seventy percent of the rice output, and uh, Hanoi for thirty, and they are the third largest rice exporter from uh, Asia. So you can imagine the potential of farmers and others increasing their, uh, you know, productivity and so on. Uh, aside from that, it tells you that Asia is the flavor uh, of the year, uh, of the month, de date and decade. And I think uh, smaller places like Vietnam have done extremely well. So on a lighter note, uh, away from what the Bombay team is telling me that the worst, uh, you know, <laughs> summer they've had as the weather is, uh, temperatures right. have skyrocketed. So, so I think I'm in a uh, rather envious spot. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely, Sanjeev. But he, we also envy you for the kind of stock picks that you deliver. Talk to us about what looks good right now in terms of the talk stock recommendations. So, so yes, Anisha, I took a contrarian bet a couple of days back and I gave a disclosure. We are adding Hindustan lever. The stock corrected all the way from 2800 at 21. Uh, 90, 2200, we think this stock has got multiple supports and this is a, like a yearly, you know, breakout. We think uh, the underlying premium now on rural income growth, particularly from the government spending, uh, you know, pre and post election, uh, fall in uh, regional, fall in input costs, all that bodes well for Hindustan lever. You cannot have the largest FMCG play not participate. And I think lever now is poised. 2350 would be my short term target, but I think it is headed back to 2450. Keep a stop loss of 2170. If the index has to move back, FMCG has to be a key. This is a very, very sweet spot which they are getting into. Second would be BATA. Look, I think that, uh, you know, footwear is a no brainer in the sense that change in aspiration, growth, and need for new footwear will see the jump from the smaller names like campus and unregulated into BATA. Bata's franchise outlet as far as contract manufacturing is playing to the hill. And I think Bata is now poised for a target of short term would be closer to 1500. But I don't rule out 1700 coming in the slightly longer term. Pedigree stock, which you must own. And lastly, I would say ICICI Bank. Uh, I think in the, in the large cap banks, it is actually ICICI which is leading from the front. The numbers are due on the 27th. It will be the best ever quarter because uh, their uh, CASA ratio and NIMS would be arguably at a very, very sweet spot. Plus, their NPAs have declined and in the order book, they are seeing the best ever credit offtake. So, I and I'm also bullish now on the market after this reasonable correction, which I had given you a call on last week that we will fall to closer to 22,000. So, I think ICICI lever are here to lead the places. And these three bets would actually make you money in the near term and in the medium term. All right. Thanks for sharing with us your big bets. And of course, enjoy the rest of your trip. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.